welcome to the Northampton Commission on Disabilities. This meeting is being audio taped and videotaped, audio recorded and video recorded. Um, so before we do introductions, just a couple of reminders. Um, I want to remind everyone, um, just so that everyone can have a chance to say what they need to say, um, please raise your hand and Patty will let me know who's raising their hand and then I'll call on you and then you can make your comment. That way we'll have um, orderliness and everyone will be able to speak. Um, also, I just want to remind you all that um, if you have items for our next agenda for March 17th, um, please email me by the week before, which would be Tuesday, March 10th. Okay, um, so let's go around and do introductions. Um, since I'm already speaking, I'll start. I'm Tori Eklund, and I'm the chair of the commission, and we can go this way. I'm Hannah Coyle, and I'm vice chair of the commission. Oh, I'm Ruth McGrath, and I'm the secretary of the commission, and I would just like to add that I am sorry I've missed the last two meetings, but I'm back now. We're happy to have you. Okay, board members. City Councilor Mary Ann LaBarge. Pat Shaughnessy, ADA coordinator and director for the Northampton Senior Services. Okay. And next we have public comment, but I don't believe we have any members of the public here. We can just do that. He doesn't want to make any public comment. <coughs> okay. Um, so, okay, so let's now do approval of the January 20th. Approve the minutes of January 20th. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Fantastic. Okay. Um, update on portable ramp proposal, Mike Nagy and Hannah Coyle. So I guess, Hannah, that's you. Yeah, um, I haven't talked to Michael recently, so we don't really had an update. I had talked to him and um, the last he mentioned was that we needed and we needed approval from um, different members and different groups in the city um, before moving forward on the proposal for the um, for the ramps. Mm -hmm. And um, he he did not give me a report, and um, <coughs> so I don't know of any further information at this time. Okay. Can I ask you what groups? I heard you say groups or something. Yes, um, I think he needs approval. Well, he needs um, approval from the Architectural Access Board. He needs approval from um, the mayor, um, and I don't know. I don't know if there's anybody else in the um, Well, I, I um, approval of the mayor. He needs approval um, from the mayor of the of the con of the specific project, and I guess the use of certain things about the use of the ranch. I'm not sure what, but that's what he he had mentioned at the last meeting when he was here. Oh, Patty, you have your hand up. Um, so Hannah, I was going to call um, Mike um, mm -hmm. because I think one of the first steps is talking with the Architectural Access Board because I think they can really fill everybody in on what actually um, mm -hmm. is doable and um, what recommendations they would have. And then I think once that's established, it's um, probably talking to other, um, like the police chief, if that's the intent to have them hold on to the ramps. And that, but I think that um, Architectural Access Board has sort of the beginning point for all of it. Right. Isn't that what our building inspector had stated to go through that? Yeah, he um, um, did recommend um, that. And, you know, there are, if that's a, a public entity, so they would be able to um, come out here. It's not like we'd have to pay anything for them to come here. So it would be, I think, to invite someone from there to come out here to speak to um, well, you and um, Mike, and then other people who are on that committee, because there's other people on, and I'm not going to remember the name of the committee that he had formed. Gain. Gain, mm -hmm. um, members of that group. Mm -hmm. So that, that's probably what should happen first. And I think that's just going to set things in motion. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Okay, so, sure, so I'll give him a call and, and see if he has any further updates. Yeah. And, and I'd be very willing to call the um, Architectural Access Board. Okay, thank you. That sounds really helpful. Do, do you want me to continue to put this on the agenda for our monthly updates, Hannah? Um, yes, um, yes, I will. That would be helpful. Thank okay. you. Thank you. All right. Yeah, um, and um, if that changes for some reason, I'll give you a call. If sure. I find out that there's, you no, know. Nothing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'll give you a call. That okay. makes sense. Uh, that sounds great. All right, thank you. Okay. I'm sorry? I'm talking to myself. Oh, okay, sorry. That's all right. Um, so then the next thing I had on the agenda was just um, a continuation of our discussion that we started last time about projects and speakers, things that we're interested in for 2015. I wanted to see if um, anyone had any other ideas or if there were any updates on pursuing some of the things that we had. Okay, what I would like to talk oh, about. Oh, you have your hand up? Okay, great. I've been working very closely with Mary Carey at the District Attorney's Office. Mm -hmm. We almost got the district attorney to come in March 17, mm -hmm. but two of the other attorneys that are coming also realized it was St. Patrick's Day. Aha! Uh -huh. And it is indeed. Yes, and that Jay definitely would not be available, and many other people. Okay. So April's out because Dave is already booked for another commitment that he has okay. so over the weekend mary is checking with him to see if we can get him to come in for may great okay yeah now i'm waiting for natasha i don't know if she's back from puerto rico yet or not she's had a previous death in her family mm -hmm. she's the chair of the human rights commission mm -hmm. and then now again she had another death and had to fly out. Oh, so wow. I'm hoping to talk with her if she's back this evening to see if I can get her and the Human Rights Commission to come in and do a round table. For March or April? I don't know yet. Okay, that would, or one of those two, that would be I great. I don't know. Okay, that sounds good. I have my hand up. Got it. Um, so, um, Jeff Harness from Cooley Dickinson Hospital is another one. Um, and then I think also in the minutes we had mentioned um, Ned Huntley and Rich Parcelletti from the DPW mm -hmm. who could talk about sidewalks and snow removal. Is that and what those, we talked about on the phone? Yes, and yeah. Definitely Richard Parcelletti yeah. because he is the superintendent of streets and yeah. sidewalks. Yeah. And then... Um, oh, sorry, who was it from Cooley Dickinson? Um, Jeff Harness. He lives on our board too. Oh, okay. And what would he be? Well, he could talk about healthy communities and um, I think transportation. Yeah, that, yeah, that's true. Oh, that would be great. Tori, let me explain to you. We just had a summit, mm -hmm. which was at the Clarion. Patty attended that also. It was excellent. Mm -hmm. It was done by Cooley Dick. Who was the other two, Patty? And then um, the. Um, I know. United Way. Yes, thank you, Jim. Yeah. Jim Ayers. Yeah. And who's the other one? Transportation. Sorry, I'm sorry. Um, oh. um, I know. I'm not going to But it was excellent. And we did round tables after. And PBTA was there. Really? Uh huh. And I was Who's listening there? to him talk. Hmm. And he had stated how. You know, they are making changes mm -hmm. about educating the public and educating their staff. Mm -hmm. So I raised my hand and I said, if I can recall, it was the Commission on Disabilities who brought you forth of the complaints and concerns of people being treated with respect mm -hmm. on PBTA. Yep. And so he turned around and stated, yes, it was the Commission on Disabilities that they had met, and that is where they had become educated themselves of what was occurring. Mm -hmm. It was excellent. Jeff Hart is, is excellent. He really is. I think he would be a good one, but I would like to not just see Jeff. I would be like good. to see Jim Ayers come in from mm -hmm. United Ways with him. I think that would be an excellent team. 
that would be great. So we just have to coordinate so that we have one yeah. speaker per meeting because we yeah. want to be sure to give everyone the time they deserve. Um, so what do you think about in March um, having Ned Huntley and yes. Rich here? Because I'm I, sure we'll still have snow. I think um, that would be excellent. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to contact um, yes. them? Would you mind? Oh, yeah, not at all. You know them, right? Yeah. That would, be, that would be, I would appreciate that. And just email me and let me know so I can put it on the agenda. Sure. Um, and then perhaps try um, for April, maybe, if possible, for the the other person that, what you were just talking about. From Jeff? Court. Yes. Or human rights. Um, hmm. Don't be choosy. Whoever we can get. How about we need to bring them in here? How about whoever we can get, and then the other one we can do for June. If the D, if um, the DA's office can come in May. Yeah. Okay. So um, Ned and Rich for March. Yep. Hopefully Jeff Harness and Jim Ears for April. Yep. May the DA's office, and then June um, human rights. Human rights. That sounds Patty, I'll handle Jeff Harness and also United Wife. Okay, so Okay. So then you'll let me know yes. what they say. Okay, yeah. that's that's great. And you're working and also with I will handle the human rights commission okay. since social services deals with all this. Okay. Um that's great. And Patty Do you have Richard Pasoletti's telephone number? Yeah, I can yeah. You okay. got that, right? Thank yeah. you. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um Anyone else? Ruth. Oh, Ruth. No, Ruth. I'm sorry. Ruth. That's that's right. You had, okay, Ruth, you, you, what do you I, mean? Th this, I wrote this up after my fall, after Thanksgiving. It has to do with a lot of problems that I have with my mobility, mobility issues and disabilities and problems. But out of it, I have a suggestion. So if you don't mind, if I just go through it before I make, it's stuff I think we should do. Sure. I mean, so. It fits in with the topic now instead of new business, but it explains why. Okay. okay. I went to the hospital, Cooley Dickinson, after I fell. Nobody recognized my mobility disabilities. We talked about it. I kept telling them I can't use my legs, I can't bend my knees, I can't get in and out of bed. I had a broken arm, and they're trying to get me to get up, and it just didn't work. Oh. And one person would leave the room, the next one would come in and not know anything about it. It's like. It's a lost cause. A disability, if you don't have something mechanical to show a disability, they just lose it. Uh -huh. I'm also on Coumadin. I hit my head, I had a concussion. They didn't know that at the time. The last nurse to come in, and they were trying to discharge me, uh, said, oh, you have a big lump on your head and you're on Coumadin. Maybe we better x-ray you. And they came out and said, you have a concussion. Uh -huh. um, again, I didn't speak up for myself. I was crying, my arm was hurting, I wasn't thinking about it and they didn't do squat. I was never admitted, which caused a ton of problems after I got home, and I, don't, I didn't know that this could happen. I don't know if anybody else knows this can happen, but because I was, I was kept for five days, but I was only under observation, so I didn't qualify for visiting nurses, I didn't qualify for home blood draws, I didn't qualify for the home health aides or the people that come and help you clean and do that stuff, only because I wasn't admitted. So people have to be aware of that. Um, I couldn't get in a car or a taxi. And PBTA, I told you this story, I don't know how anybody lives with PBTA. <laughs> the phone number that's in the phone book is the wrong number. I called it and I transferred three times before I finally got to somebody who could <coughs> take my information and schedule my ride. For paratransit? Uh, for, for paratransit? Yeah. They have the wrong number in the phone book? Yeah, well they have the administration number instead of a scheduling number. Oh. So they transferred me three times before I got scheduled. Then. They um, don't give you the rules. The rules they gave me were very brief, said it was snowing. I mean, it was time when we had bad weather. I was told by the scheduler I had to be outside or the van wouldn't even stop. So one day when it snowed, the second trip we had, we sat, I was just sitting in a wheelchair. And my husband's kind of covering me over with a blanket. It's snowing like crazy. We were there for an hour. The van never showed, so we finally went into the house. And I had my cell phone right with me. Finally went into the house, got the number, and called them, and they said, oh, we've canceled all the vans today. And there was no message on the house machine either. They just never called. And they hadn't canceled before we went out because we were watching all the school cancellations and then everything else, and PBTA wasn't listed. Um, 
So that's crazy. Um, I can talk to you more about that one on one. I have a lot to say about it, but probably not right now. Well, um, can I can I just ask? I know you're still going, but mm -hmm. did you like call PVTA to talk to um, someone in customer service about your experience with PVTA? No, no, I did. I didn't. Call I can. Either. I scheduled another ride after that, but I can tell you who to call and how to work with the system. Okay, well hopefully I won't meeting. need them again. Yeah. They, were, they were there when I needed them, but that's another point. All this kind of adds up to what I think we should do. Um, things like, I couldn't get in a car because I can't use my legs. I always use my arms to horse myself in and out of a car. Or the stairs on the TVT van, even after my arm was getting better. They're too tall, I couldn't get up them. Wow. I have to have room to swing my leg to get up the stairs or horse myself up with my arms. Well, my arm was broken, I couldn't do that. I couldn't swing my legs because the doorway is about this wide. I'm sorry, that's about, what, two and a half feet? You're familiar with it, Tori. Mm -hmm. um, yep. So I used the wheelchair that I have, and then they lifted me up with a lift and put me in. But what if somebody in my situation who didn't have a wheelchair, what would they do? They can't get in a the car, they can't use the van because they can't get on the van. They can't accept a ride for the same reason they can't get in a car. You'd really be stuck. There's got to be, I mean, I couldn't even call a taxi because I couldn't get a taxi. It's the same thing as a car. So when you, when you got lifted up, I guess I got lost on this one. You got lifted up and, and got put in what? The PVTA van. I was using the wheelchair that I have. And then went on the lift and then it got, right. okay. It got me up. Okay. That's the only way. And the drivers, I had three different rides with three different drivers and they all told me that it's against the rules for somebody to stand on that lift and be lifted up. So, and that would have helped you. Oh yeah, I wouldn't have needed the wheelchair without that. I could walk fine. I was using a cane in my left hand. Uh, if there was a way to get on the PVTA van, so maybe we can suggest to PVTA that they carry a collapsible chair as an option just to help people that can't climb get in and out. I mean, it's That's a good idea. You know, it's yeah. something we can think about. Yeah. Um, then there's just stuff that I'll talk to Victoria about later. I didn't know how to schedule yeah. when I left, how long to say you're going to be there. The other um, problem is they're yeah. in Hatfield. There are only two orthopedic offices in this end of the state that deal with broken arms. One's in Hatfield, one's in Springfield. I brought that up at our summit. Oh. Yeah. And you did, though, I told you I did. Yeah, yeah. And the problem is you can't forcibly force another town to say, yes, I will pay so much. Yeah, but maybe and that's what, what happened with Hatfield. Right, maybe Hatfield, maybe they, they didn't buy letter. into it. Yeah, I maybe wonder if we sent them a letter and said, this is a problem. You know, maybe you should think about it because people can't go to Springfield. But it was brought up at the summit about that. They knew about that. Mm -hmm. They just can't. Push yeah, it. Anybody bugged them about it and said, you know? I know. I problem. agree with you. It's that's why we talked about it. But to um, me, Hatfield people who talked to the selectmen about it. The, the orthopedic surgeons in Hatfield didn't even realize that people couldn't get to them. That's awful. She spent two days on the phone trying to find me a van that could pick me up in the wheelchair and mm -hmm. take me there. She couldn't find one. She found one in Boston. They wanted a hundred and something dollars for each way because they were coming from Boston. If you had nice help, you could get a PT-1. Mm -hmm. A what? PT-1. It's transportation to medical appointments paid for through Mass Health. I do you have Mass Health? Do you have Mass Health? Oh, you don't? No, I don't. I don't oh. that you can use it. Because there are private um, van services. They, oh, they, um, yeah, right. they tried them, the, the, the place in, in Hatfield, what is that, Camp, uh, oh. Camp Orthopedics or something like that, I forget yeah. their name. Um, the place in Springfield that I wound up going, New England Orthopedics, they tried, but then it turned out the PVTA could take me there. So, um, and see, that's, that's a big problem. Yeah, and, and the offices, I mean, the medical office, they weren't even aware of it. She said, that's, oh yeah, you can get here. We're right over the Northampton line, and I said, no, I can't. So, She's all right, the guy that. from the PVTA that was at the summit with us on the round table, he said that they knew all about that, how they could not go into Hatfield. PVTA knew that, but I'm talking about the doctor's office. That I, I know that, but what I'm saying is they know there is such a problem here, Ruth, yeah. that they cannot get into that medical doctor down there or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm saying it's, I don't, Do you know, Patty, how much it costs? Okay, so I have one. Wait a minute. I am five. Wait a minute. Okay. What would be the cost, do you know, of 
Well, no, I, it's, it probably varies you know, to, to what you have for a community. Nobody brought that talked about the cost. Because yeah, I didn't talk to the city, is. I just talked to the doctor's office mm -hmm. who didn't so, do anything and had to check themselves. Yeah. So, um, I, anyway, what this is all bringing up to is anybody in this, I was lucky because I've had a lot of experiences. I know all you guys, I've heard of a lot of these things. But say somebody across the street falls, breaks an arm, and can't walk. Mm -hmm. How are they going to know what to do? Mm. There's, there's nobody you can call. Right. I called the doctor's office and said I need help, and they said, sorry. Yeah. They tried to call places for me. I had yeah. medical getting angry at me, actually angry on yeah. the phone, because I'm trying to tell them I can't get there to get my blood drawn. Yeah. You know, it was snowing. I couldn't drive. I so, couldn't even get a ride. What do you think we should do? Well, I suggest like maybe we advertise the commission some, get it out there so the public even knows we exist. We are a public commission, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that, that people should be able to access to get information. And you're correct about that because everybody yes. is saying they don't know nothing about this right, commission. Right. Um, maybe put together some information and have a public meeting, you know, like, like a lot of you have for your different things that come up. Maybe we can do something like that just to yeah. let the public know that we're here. Put out some ads maybe on public TV and 22, you know, all the different places you have. I think you could have a meeting right here at yeah. the Senior Center. Yeah, yeah. And get the flyers out somehow. Yep, you getting know. advertised. And I'm not talking about inviting other disability groups. I'm talking right. about inviting the public. The public people who need well, that's information. What we right. decide. And the other thing I think we should really concentrate on getting back together is that pamphlet that we had, you know, that we could hand out that has information. So if somebody calls and says, I'm homebound, I can't get out, I, I've injured myself, where can I go for help? If we have a brochure that we can send them or hand them or even if we have members that are willing to talk to people, you know, and say you can do this and this and this and this. Now, we have a senior center. Mm -hmm. Can we have brochures out there? Or of what you're talking about? No. To oh, let no, them know yet. what we're all about? Not there's yet. nothing out there? No, there's, we, this committee has no um, brochure. I have a spot out there for, with a bulletin board that's for Commission on Disability, right. and I put stuff up on it. I was putting our what, minutes. What is up on it, Patty? When I find newspaper articles, or there's stuff about Stavros, or any other um, agency. Okay. And Do I you put think up there's a possibility with a flyer of what we're talking about, the needs of anybody, mm -hmm. no matter if it's elderly, young, or whatever, who's disabled, of knowing who you can contact, like Tori knows exactly about the BBTA, mm -hmm. give that direct information. Mm -hmm. um, I really feel that the Hatfield thing has no bearing on that situation, putting it on a flyer. Oh, no, that wouldn't be Okay, but no. I can see what you're saying medically. I do have to say, at the Cooley Dick, I was there from 4.30 until 10 o'clock at night. And I was okay. in that room until And I saw what was going on, oh. okay? I thought she got great care in mm -hmm. the emergency room, that I am going to say, mm -hmm. all right? It was once they took her, because they had difficulties getting her out of the bed and so forth mm -hmm. with four girls mm -hmm. trying to get her out. Mm -hmm. The big problem was once she got, they were going to discharge her and ask me if I could drive her home. <laughs> I said, I can't drive her home. There was no way. And her husband doesn't drive. He was home with her mom. Mm -hmm. So anyways, I was in the process because she didn't have her cell phone. And, and I like said, it. I'll go home and get your cell phone for you. So I get home and I said to her husband, well, you might as well come with me down to the emergency room because I need her cell phone. I said, the, charge the charger. The charger. I had the phone. Dude. So I called the emergency room from her house once I got there. They had a charger down there, so that's good to know. Yeah. Okay, yeah. with your cell phones. Yeah. That was an experience I did not know. I didn't know either. So they moved her out of her room, put her in another room in the emergency room. Mm -hmm. It was ice cold. Ice did cold. You, that yeah, I won't forget. Yeah. 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 Anyways, the nurse wow. said she was concerned because they did have difficulties getting her <coughs> off the bed. Plus, the fact is, 
I could not drive her or get her out of my car. So I left at 10. She said they brought her upstairs at 2 o'clock in the morning. Okay? Because the next day I went in, when she ever told me, I couldn't believe that. She was not admitted at all. Why? I don't understand that. Because usually when you leave the emergency room, or maybe there is such a thing as observation that needs to be checked out, but there is something I do want to say. Mm -hmm. And I'm very surprised you have not written that on there. That bothers me, okay? Is how you were treated um, the day you were leaving. Well, that, because I think I have other Don't stuff, say no. No, it's not. I just read it wasn't pertinent to what we're doing now. I have well, it is pertinent later. about well, respect and dignity. Well, yeah. Well, absolutely. We, we had a nurse, I had a nurse, who didn't want to be there, was angry at the world. Uh, she was, it was awful angry toward. with Mary Ann. Not she was good. angry with my husband. She was angry with me. She was just in general. She wasn't angry with me. Well, she was nasty. She was not nice not to me. Not to me, she wasn't. She wasn't nice to me. She talked with you all the time. Bill and I just stood in the corner. Mm -hmm. But she was very nasty to Ruth. Well, no one should be. Patty, I did see that. Yeah. No one is. And I'm talking about. That's big to me about respect and well, dignity. Well, me too. And no, no, one, agree. no one should be doing that when they're working with people. Because we thought about yeah. writing a letter to the collegiate well, you and hand delivering it to the CEO. So I'm waiting for Ruth to write it up with Bill and I. Oh. <laughs> so and you knew that. We told so you that. To, so to, to get on track with what we can do, I, I think Set up a flight. I really like the idea of um, either setting up a flyer and advertising to have a public meeting where we invite people to come and get information or putting together a pamphlet of information you know what would you do if this happened to you and putting together information and i was thinking that if we wanted to do that we could maybe have a subcommittee work on that they just and I think advertising is important to let the community know. What I exists. agree, and I would I would work on that with someone like if you Ruth if we wanted to do that. I mean I would work on that with you. We could I'd be glad to work get on together that also. and put Sorry. stuff together. Okay, good. I don't know if Hannah would like to be involved in it. Mm -hmm. I mean I think I think the whole group should be involved in it on the language. Yeah. yeah, but I think we're going to need, um, I think it would need to be just, ex just another day. Right, it would need mm -hmm. to be extra time for those of us who were interested in that to work on that as a subcommittee and just figure out what information we would want to put in. And, you know, what would you do if, and then these things happen, you need, you know, talk about certain things like, mm -hmm. the, like, what happened, yeah, and phone numbers and things like that. And we can pool our resources of things that we knew and we could work on it. I think. That would be a really awesome resource to offer. And then to you can run it through somebody like Stavros people. and have them add things we don't know about. Right. I mean, I'm sure we can learn a lot doing it too. So I it would be, be an what, ongoing project. I think what would be really good here, because I think we're going overboard here, we got Jeff coming in, Harness and United Way, mm -hmm. hopefully in April, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Of uh, bringing them in, talking with them. And I think you'll see a connection here with the Cooley Dick and United Way helping out with language. Mm. Yeah, that probably would be true. And it may be, it may be. <coughs> I think be, the brochure is excellent. Yeah, and it may be that mm. what we're talking about already exists somewhere. I don't know. Um, I'm in touch with several different disability commission secretaries and with a guy, you know, remember the abilities expo? I don't know if you still get that email or not. Um, but I can put the word out and ask from the people that I've been talking to if anybody has anything like that in their groups. Um, okay. There's a, As a start anyway. um, community action has had a book out. It's <coughs> called first call for help. Yes. Um, and it mm. lists everything, any kind of service, um, that they know of in a very thick book. Uh, I have to say, at this time, I don't know if that is still um, printed. Okay, let me um, tell you, I have the executive director, Claire Higgins from mm -hmm. Community Action, coming to Social Services and Veterans Affairs mm -hmm. on April 20th. I will email Claire tomorrow. I'm not doing any emailings tonight. I've got a couple of people I have to handle tonight. 
and talk to her about that first help booklet. Okay. Okay. And that would be excellent. And maybe if we could look at that and see if that, if see if that covers what we're talking about. Um, and if it does, then maybe what we could do as a commission is do some kind of a public meeting and sort of make sure people know about that book, make sure they know about us, make sure they know who to call if they have questions, and kind of get to know us. Because um, it is true with what she's saying. People are saying to me, I didn't know there was a commission on disabilities. Yes, and I mean, so we want them to know us. Now, I mean, I know about us, I know about some places to call, and I still felt like I was lost at sea. Mm -hmm. I had. Well, you know, you saw, I, I was just, I was completely lost. I didn't know who to call, what to do. Um, you know, it's just, it's an awful feeling. And maybe if people know they can get help. Yeah. yeah. So I wonder too, Marianne, if you could ask um, Claire Higgins if that book is in any kind of accessible format, like an online format, mm -hmm. or any kind of mm -hmm. format for people who don't read print so that I could look at it. That would mm -hmm. be really helpful. If you could just ask her that as well. Like online? Online or... Um, electronic. If it's in electronic, electronic. If it's in electronic format, I can read it. Yeah, that's all I need to know. All right, well, that is a, um, that is a great idea. So maybe we should have some follow-up on this. Right, story. because there should be literature in here, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, because you have a, a different diversity coming in and out of here. Yeah. On our board now, we have, um, what's her name, Patty? From the Latino group. Oh, oh yes, Diana Solar. Yes, you know there's many people out there that are disabled. Yeah, yeah. So um, Ruth, you said you were going to um, reach out to some people that you know and get more information. Yeah. Well, I do know a community action one. That might be where to start, but community um, action would might be a good place to start. Yeah, I do talk That's to other place. disability groups. Some of the secretaries we've been comparing well, what we do and what and all that. I can always ask if yeah. Why don't Why don't you do that? And then next month we'll have that on the agenda to have you know anyone who has a follow up um, pertaining to this. We can. We can talk about it more, but I, I really like the idea of doing that, and I really like the idea of having some kind of an event for people to get to know who we are and who they can contact if they need anything. Um, and the other thing that I was going to say, which is on a slightly different subject, but I feel myself about to forget it, so I better say it now. Um, <laughs> I can feel the thought like slipping away. <laughs> so. Um, what I was, I was thinking about what you said about transportation and Hatfield, and I was thinking that um, I don't know if they have, if Hatfield has a commission on disability, but maybe that would be a place to start. Maybe um, I could talk to them and ask them if they could advocate, since it's their town, to see if they could get their town to pay into the transportation mm -hmm. system. Yeah, I can call if you want and find out if they have one. If you could find out if they have one and um, email me and give me any information about it, that would be awesome. And then I can call them. We'll find that out from instantly. Diane size them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So what, I would. Or if you go, uh, if, uh, what Council of Arts said is uh, mm -hmm. Peter Focott's um, age, Diane size them. He lives in Hatfield. Or you can go online okay. and look I'll up call commissions okay. in Massachusetts and you'll find out. That would be great. And and then um, let me know. Yeah, I, I'll call her. Okay. okay. That would be great. And then I, I can, if there is one, I could maybe talk to their chair yeah. and talk to her about him or her about the issue. So I just want to say one more thing about oh, sorry, that. Go ahead. So Ruth, I hope you do write a letter to Coley Dickinson Hospital because as a yeah. consumer, they Kobe should know Joe. what your experience was. And it, at one time, um, and I haven't been admitted to the hospital, so I really don't know, but they used to send out a, an evaluation that you could fill out, like when my father was in the hospital, emergency room, or, you know, admitted. They didn't have to be admitted, because I haven't gotten there was One time it was he was in the emergency room, so I filled it out for him. But oh. anyone can write a letter. You can, write, yes. you can yeah. just write your own letter. Oh, yeah. You know, as a consumer. Yeah. I've written hospitals before I mean, my mom had bad really bad experience yeah. and stuff like that. I, I, I remember you saying And I think yeah. it would be I think they need to know that. I was a witness. I actually saw yeah. how she was treated and your husband did too. Yeah. And he was not a happy He person. was ripped. And I said to him, <laughs> go and tell her. But he didn't. 
You know? Bill's very shy and he doesn't even do so, like that. You when know? you have somebody ill and you respect, I would have said I want you out in the hall and I would have said, you go in there and apologize. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Usually that was awful. Awesome, that was awful. Well, <laughs> I encourage, yeah, I, I agree with what Patty said. I definitely encourage you to write a letter so that mm, hopefully others won't have to go through the same thing. Now you got to remember the nurse. I don't remember her name. Oh, I don't remember her name either. I can just yeah. say the nurse signed duty my last day in. in um, if you mom. say the day and she the should time, find your they'll, they'll find, they'll find if they, out. If you say the day and the time, yeah. they'll know. They'll look at the schedule and they'll know. They'll say, oh, that was so and so. Yeah. They'll, yeah. they'll figure that out. Because I do that with man drivers all the time. I don't know their names and I just say, oh, the person who picked me up on this day at this time. And they're like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will say the PBTA drivers were great. All three, all six of them, because I had three going and three coming that were always yeah. different. But they were all great with us. I mean, some have their issues, which you'll get to yeah. know if you're a frequent, long-term user. But that's another conversation. <laughs> um, anyway, all right. These are really great ideas. Do we have any other business? Yes, I have. I have something. So, oh, okay. Council of Barge. Yes, Council of Barge. And then me. Okay, that's the order we'll go in. Marianne, you can go first. Okay, I want to talk about. Our city councilor agenda coming in for Thursday. Oh, I looked at my packet, which I got on Friday, and we get them on Tuesdays because other things are added on. And I called Patty and told Patty what was in our council packet. It says, upon the recommendation of Mayor David Narkowitz on planning and sustainability. Whereas the open space recreation and multi-use trail plan recommends a pavement two parks program preserving small previously urbanized or paved areas as parklets. And whereas there is a public interest in providing handicapped accessible entrance to buildings to serve all populations and promote commercial vitality. And whereas the city has previously provided leases at market value for projects providing access to private space. So forth, like an example, Thorns Market, slash Kanban, and Fitzwillies, slash Toasted Owl, and leases at no cost for projects providing public access and benefits, so forth, the roundhouse and the landscaping. The city has received a request for the development of a 200 square feet public parklet with a handicap ramp, which would serve the parklet in an abutting business in an unused area off Amber Lane that is not needed by Central Services or the Department of Public Works. And whereas the abutting business has committed to build and maintain the public parklet. Anyways, I looked at this and I said, wait a minute, how come we have not been notified, mm -hmm. the Commission on Disabilities, at least giving us a heads up that there's a business. And that business, which I found out, is I don't know if you know where Amber Lane is. It's that little alley like between where Starbucks is and then you have um, that other store on the end, Good Life or whatever it's called. Synergy, I think. You go down there and to the right is a brick little small building. Attorney Michael Ryan bought that, oh maybe about five, six, seven years ago and just sold it. And a couple bought it. And they are renovating this building and it's going to be a new coffee shop. Oh. The city owns what we're talking about, the parkway, okay, that area, which Central so, uh, Service and also the Department of Public Works doesn't have use for it. Hmm. So we're allowing them to use it. And you're gonna have a handicap ramp, which the new a budding business now, okay, mm -hmm. is going to build it and pay for the expense of that. They are renovating 
which I talked with the building inspector for a good 35, 40 minutes today, believe me. And he told me, he shot me over on an email so I could see it after he talked with me. And I also sent it to Patty. In regards to the floor, the whole floor layout of that building, mm -hmm. okay, it is going to have two handicapped bathrooms. The doors are all handicapped on it, accessible. The counters are handicapped. Nice. Okay. Nice. So to me, that was important mm -hmm. as a city councilor, seeing something like this, not knowing about it, and our commission not knowing about it. Like the brochures, not knowing about a commission on disabilities or yeah. whatever, medical advice or whatever. I just felt, and I told the building inspector, he said, well, usually if there's a zoning variance, then Patty would hear about it and it would come to us. Okay? That I did not know. And I told him, as a counselor and being on this committee, I've not seen anything but one thing come to us on anything on a renovation. Mm -hmm. I said, we're handicapped accessible. Mm -hmm. But anyways, I told him communication I felt was very valuable. I will be bringing this up at City Council Thursday night of how I feel, okay, that we do have a commission. And you're correct. It's like, we're here. Yeah. And people are not realizing it. We are here. Let us know this so we could write a letter to these new business people saying thank you from our Commission on Disabilities. Mm -hmm. Can I add something to sure. that? In the last two disabilities commissions that I was on, we're, we're part of the city. When you get something and you send it to transportation and parking, you send it to this one or that one or the other one, we should be on that list. We, we used to be. Uh, yeah. We used to, we used to um, be asked. Yeah, right, that uh, Council of Arts just talked about the charter. We used to be on the list, and if it had to do with adding a handicapped spot, um, anything to do with um, accessibility, we would be notified and we would respond to what the request was. An example was um, Councilor Specter who was requesting a handicapped spot on Crescent Street. Yeah. You know, so I went up, looked at it, we talked about it at commission and while well, we were in the committee right. back then. So we went up and looked at that yeah. spot. So we were involved um, many, many times. Yeah, well, can we not, get back on no. that list again? I mean, can we? Uh, I don't know how. Well, usually I think Patty with an ordinance, mm -hmm. okay? It is a disability ordinance, so they're putting a sign for a handicapped accessible or a ramp or whatever. But yes, you could send a letter to transportation and parking, okay, in regards to, because that's where the ordinance would go first. It's the transportation and parking, and then I think it goes, what, to the Board of Public Works, then it goes to ordinance. And then it comes to City Council for a full-blown recommendation. So the, with the first reading, um, doesn't it get referred out to multiple? Um, I just said that. Well, it I know, but I thought... City Council with a recommendation to go to the committees. So you send a letter saying, as the commission, not you, as the commission, mm -hmm. okay, that they would like to have any ordinance pertaining to handicapped accessible to be notified. Okay, I thought what you were saying was it had to go to like um, the building commissioner or let's say police that there was a, a sequence of who got it when rather than everybody at once. That no, we recommend it out of city council to go to the committees. Right, right. And right. if it's handicapped accessible, Patty, the police chief is on the commission of transportation and parking. The board of public works is on from right. transportation and parking. That Huntley is on it. You have Wayne Fiden on it, and you have two counselors. Right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it would go there. Then, because it's already been through transportation parking. I don't know if it would go back to the Board of Public Works or not. Maybe it does, depending. And I would assume it probably does. Mm -hmm. And then it has to go to ordinance. Then ordinance will make a recommendation to full city council. Mm -hmm. We then say yes or no. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, Ruth. Okay, Ruth I'm, I'm, do you have something for other business? Oh, yeah, I do. But along the lines of Councilor mm -hmm. Lavarge, um, I'm thinking, too, there's a lot of things that people don't think require disability. I mean, if they're building a new building, 
who's to say it needs to, disability access, mobility access, um, you know, on the signs going in the door, on top of the writing underneath that they should have the braille. But that, but that, that would be um, building commissioner. Yeah, building commissioner. Because that's facility issues? Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah he, and, and Great he'll time. be very good about it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This is what I wanted to talk about. I got a letter from, I, I talked to a lot of different people, and the Abilities Expo was something that I brought up last year sometime, and I get email from them all the time. Mm -hmm. They have a new application. It's an app. Oh. Yeah. Works for your cell phone, works for your tablets, anything that has an internet connection mm -hmm. that you can carry portable with you. Yeah. And it's on my cell phone, so if you want to see it, I can show you. I also printed up a package about it. It's called uh, Parking Mobility, and it's um, run by disabled people. It's a nonprofit, what do you call it, 40, it's on here. 501CX3. Oh, 501C. Yeah, yeah. Um, what you, they have complete instructions on, on here. I have pictures of all the different screens. Um, and I printed just what they say about it briefly because they can say it much better than I do. Get to the page. Of course, it's the last page. Uh, welcome to parking mobility. Okay, we can skip that part. Uh, report disabled parking abuse to your city in less than two minutes. And they actually report to the city. That's how it works. You do what you have to on your cell phone. Then when you say submit, it goes to this, this company, this 501C, who in turn sends it to whatever city the violation is in. That's so awesome. I'm in Connecticut and I take a picture of Windsor Locks, it'll go to the Windsor Locks police. It's not, it wouldn't go up here because I live here. It would go to the police in the bottom. That's great. Um, when you see a vehicle parked illegally, simply launch Parking Mobility, which is the name of the app, you take three photos, and they tell you which photos to take on here. Mm -hmm. And you don't actually go into your camera app. The photos are actually part of the Parking Mobility app. Mm. Um, and then you submit it. They tell the city, and they ticket the vehicles, and the city tickets the vehicle's owner. You can help improve accessibility in your community and support people with disabilities. Uh, da -da. Okay, you can also share, find, and suggest accessible parking locations anywhere in the world. All we care about is here. Mm -hmm. um, this actually, I tried it in Northampton. <coughs> I was in Florence, and I said, find a handicap parking spot, and it showed me two handicap spots. It doesn't tell you if they're open or not. It just says this is where you can find them. Mm -hmm. Uh, it didn't show me the non-medical ones. <laughs> where, do, where do we have them up in Florence, in front of the... Um, There's one in the side of Florence Street. In the side of Florence Savings. Savings Bay. Yeah. Yeah. Street. That's we a, have three. That's a great app. Another one coming. So, I'm sorry, three. so how do you get the app? It's from the... the um, Free download from the App Store. Either right? Apple or the App Store. The, what is it? I forget what they call it for Apple, but oh, for Apple it's the App Store. Yeah, I don't store know what it is for Android. Um, so parking mobility. It's a place to it. Parking mobility yeah. is the name of it. It's called parking mobility. Um, they're looking for the more and more people they say get use it, the better it's going to work. Is it free? It's free. Yeah. It's awesome. And I think I have this. I'm gonna. Can you? You can't see pictures on your mobile on your device. Can you try? I wish. I know. I've <laughs> that most of this package, I have this package electronically, but most of it's pictures except for the last page. Mm -hmm. So if I send it to you, I don't know if it'll do any good. Um, you can the send, language would be you can, you can send it to me. So it's just something, I mean, a lot of people don't have smartphones, don't have tablets mm -hmm. they can use, but it's out there, it's something we can use, and the more we use it, I mean, at Walmarts all the time, still. Mm -hmm. um, I had an argument with a guy at Valley Medical last week, and I submitted him. I was, I was mad. I called the police. <laughs> I was so mad. I pulled into Valley Medical, mm -hmm. and you have to go straight and around and into the parking lot. And he, a big pothole, too. Yeah, he cut me off. He went in the, mm -hmm. the wrong way. And went as fast as he could, pulled into the only available spot, which happened to be a handicapped spot. So I was really nice about it. I rolled down my window and I said, excuse me, sir, are you aware that's a, a handicapped spot? He said, oh, I have a sorbet. And he went running into the building. Well, that's, that's great. We can all encourage people to use that. Yeah. I mean, um, those I know those. That I submitted it on this and there was a cruise there before I left. Great. So that's excellent. It does go to the town. That's excellent. Patty, you had something for other business? I'd like to ask Chief Sinkles about this. I'm going to talk to him about that. 
great. The name of it is, and I also have it here if anybody wants to look at it on my phone, what it looks like, I can show you. Another, and you're, you're talking about making ourselves more um, visible. Mm -hmm. The um, 13th Annual Health and Safety Fair is going to be held here on May 7th. And I know in the past that um, COD has set up when a table, um, May 7th, open to the public 10 to 2. And we usually have between 65 and 68 exhibitors here. So um, if the COD wants to think about having a table again. Yes, I think that's a great idea. I'll make a motion that we have a table at the uh, Health and Safety Fair at the Senior Center on May 7th. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 I, think, um, I think that's a great idea. And I, I think between now and then we should think about um, what kind of materials and information that we want to put at the table and that might dovetail nicely with what we were talking about earlier um, about getting information from community action we're developing some information of our own things that we could put out there and i ask how come how long has the committee on disabilities been operating at? how many years uh, well, long before I was here, I was here in 2001. Long and so, um, whenever the city accepted the um, accepted having a committee on disabilities or whatever the name of it was that they accepted, I'll say probably. I mean, I can look it up because it would be listed with the ordinance. Quite a long time. Yeah, so I'm going to say it was probably not too long after the. Um, ADA uh, law passed. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. We have a banner for the table this year too, right? Yeah, we had that last oh, year too. Yeah, I think. Yeah, that was yeah, we last year. Yeah, we taped it. I think. Yeah. That's I know great. we were right by the door last year when people walked in. Oh. I didn't remember that, but. <laughs> The year before that, we were in front of the coffee shop. Yeah, I remember that. I remember stupid things, but I don't remember, you know, what I had for supper. Any other announcements no. or other business or anything? Do we have a move to adjourn? No to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All, in, all not in favor? Stay here forever. Okay. <laughs> so now we can't stay here forever. <laughs>